And now, the history of time. Time is another illustrious member of the Lamiaceae family, which includes mint, basil, marjoram, and rosemary. However, it's most closely related to oregano. There are about 350 different varieties of thyme, of which garden thyme and wild thyme are the ones most often used for cooking. Thyme originates from the Western Mediterranean region, and it was first found around Italy, Spain, Greece, and Southern France. When it comes to how time got its name, you've got your choice of three fabulous doors, all with unique and interesting prizes. Behind door number one is the belief that it originates from the Greek word thumon or thumos, which means courage. Greek men would rub the herb on their chest. Romans would add it to their bathwater to prepare for battle. Woohoo! Who's up for a time bubble bath party, huh? Mm. Roman soldiers would also burn time bundles to amp up their courage and bravery. Which brings us to door number two, which says that it could come from the Greek word thymon or thymiana, which means to fumigate. Ooh, or maybe we can use it to make some nice homemade jerky. This is also fitting because the Greeks and Romans used thyme to help refresh their homes with its odor, which also could chase away insects. And finally, door number three, where we find the Greek word thio, meaning perfume. Again, because of its sexy, sexy smell. Now this is also very plausible because the Greek expression, to smell of time, was a sincere compliment and highest praise of someone's gracefulness and elegance. The Romans also used it to give a nice aromatic flavor to cheese and liquor. Mmm. So, which one will you choose? Courage, fumigation, or perfume? But choose wisely, for a false definition will lead to certain death. He chose poorly. Guess what? All this guessing could actually be moot. Because going back to somewhere between 3500 and 2750 BC, we find the ancient Sumerians, who called time Tham and used it for an antiseptic. So, the name could very well originate from there. There's also evidence that the ancient Babylonians used time in their time as an antiseptic as well. Sorry, I was really trying to avoid doing any cheesy puns or time jokes, and I just really blew it this time, sorry. Oh no. In their t period of existence, the ancient Egyptians also used thyme in their ultra herbaceous embalming fluid. This fluid also contained other herbs like basil, sage, and rosemary. Do not drink it though. It is not as tasty as you think. The next instance of thyme doesn't appear until we find it in the Ebers papyrus, which said that it could be used as a pain relief. Getting back to the time Ugh! era era of the Greeks. Dramatist Ebolus recommended that ladies wear a wreath of time, saying, For who would forbear to kiss a girl who's wearing this? Dionysus of Syracuse, known for his wild, wild parties, strewed his palace with wild thyme before entertaining. Partly because this naughty boy knew that thyme was considered an aphrodisiac. About 300 BC, Theophastus noticed that an abundance of thyme blossoms indicated a large harvest for beekeepers. Roman poet Ovid also wrote about these same blossoms. Near the purple hills of flowering Hymettos is a sacred spring and earth soft with green grass. Now this actually refers to the wild thyme that's found near Mount Hymettos and the honey that's made in that area, both then and now, is actually considered some of the best in the world. Moving into the Middle Ages, the notion of time being good for courage persisted, and European ladies embroidered scarves with a bee hovering around a sprig of time to give to chivalrous knights heading off to battle. The soldiers would then cram these charms into pockets, purses, vests, gauntlets, jock straps, candy containers, or more often than not just attach them to their clothing as a visible badge of honor. Time was also extensively used as protection against the Black Plague of the 1340s. Be gone, foul plague, you shall not infect me. 
It was also during the Middle Ages that the Romans introduced time to the rest of Europe and England. And by the 16th century, Gerard mentions time in the herbal as being naturalized throughout Europe. While time didn't get much press outside of the standard herbal guides for some reason, it does get mentioned by several high-profile authors like Francis Bacon, Alexandre Dumas, Thomas Hardy, D.H. Lawrence, and Shakespeare. That takes us up to 1719, when German chemist Caspar Newman makes the important discovery of thymol. This is the main active ingredient in time which is responsible for many of its key health benefits. French chemist A. or M. Lalmont, uh, whose first name is apparently lost to history as far as I can tell, determined Thymol's empirical formula in 1853. And this allowed Swedish chemist Oskar Wiedemann to synthesize it in 1882. In the book The Herb Garden, Lady Rosalind Northcote talks about how in the south of France, wild thyme was a symbol of extreme republicanism, and tufts of it were often sent with a summons to attend secret Republican meetings. Herbalist Maud Grieve wrote a lot about time and how it was used during World War I. She talks about how it was often used as an antiseptic and an anesthetic on the battlefields. Finally, in 1997, Time receives the prestigious International Herb Association's Herb of the Year Award. And thus, we reach the time where we have no more time to talk about time. Perhaps next time we shall discuss other aspects of time, but this time... Oh, ow. Thanks. I needed that. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and please share it with your friends. My question for today is, what are your favorite herbs? Are there any particulars that you'd like to see me cover like this one? If so, let me know in the comment section. If you're interested about finding out the history of other cool herbs like basil and sage, go ahead and click on the videos over here to the right. Until next time, be kind to each other. And remember, time is precious. Don't waste it. That doesn't count as a pun, does it?